Hi everyone and welcome to Vintage Digital Watches. So I bought this watch from uh, a seller in Israel from eBay. It's a uh, Casio Tron and it cost $15 plus $10 shipping and uh, it was advertised as not working. And this is it. Wow, look at that bracelet. Well, it's not the champion of new old stocks, but it looks pretty good. And my intention with this is to add it to my cheapo Casio Tron collection. As you know, I'm looking for cheap Casio Trons. And I might attempt to fix this one. Oh, it's so dirty. And the back looks like it has been polished. Anyway, I will try a battery. It was advertised as not working. And yeah, you can already see the corrosion. Um, there we have a bit. A bit more here that looks like it's going to the board probably it won't work yeah and nothing one good sign is that the light isn't working either which indicates power is not coming from the battery at all usually the micro light unless it's a specialist watch the micro light is uh, connected straight through the button contact to the battery so we'll start by taking the module out there is a lot of dirt in this one this watch has seen some days and here we have the ring out and here we have the gasket point right there and the module easily comes out we do have there an artifact as you can see a lot of corrosion here right around where the battery plus is picked up so this fix might not even be that complicated Oh God, look at that. I'm not even going to turn the board over yet, but look at that. Let me get some light in here. Look at that. Just look at the corrosion. Oh my god. The rest of the parts seems pretty okay. There is no corrosion here on the zebra strips. But let's see what's on the other side of this board and hmm. All the corrosion seems to be here in the power supply area, which is a really good thing because that's what you want in a corroded watch to have the corrosion right around the area where you have the battery supply because that means nothing has got to the other parts. I am going to do a short inspection on the microscope and the first clean just to get this big residue off just to see what we're up against. Okay, so here we are with the verdict. Uh, you can see some of these pads going out to the LCD are interrupted by corrosion we have corrosion repair we have to do over there corrosion repair we have to do over here and on the other side corrosion repair in this area 
I only took the corrosion away using a Q-tip dipped in alcohol, but now I will take it under the, the microscope and physically scrape away the corrosion. And I like to do this operation with a sharp needle and under the microscope you just start scraping away. Make sure you remember where the trace was because it's sometimes the area is so corroded that you have to absolutely remove the entire trace. So you just start and gently scrape away. And from time to time, using a Q-tip dip dipped in alcohol, just go over the area to check your progress. And now we are going to take a wire brush into this Dremel tool. And this is a softer brush. And what we want to do is expose the remaining traces from the area that we've scraped the crystals off, the corrosion off and we want to see how much of the traces are left there and the extent of the reconstruction that we have to do. So just gently do small passes. We don't want to break the existing traces away, rather just take a small layer of conformal coating away. This is the area we're working on. So if you have a corroded board um, and if it's heavily corroded like this one, you will have some places where you have to use a drill bit and I have prepared for this uh, 0 0.4 and 0 0.5 drill bits. And where I'm going to use those is where a trace crosses from one side of the PCB board to the other you will see small holes and if you have corrosion in those holes a drill bit held in your hand can actually do really good cleaning so basically don't even attach it in a, in a dremel tool it will be too harsh just hold it in your hand and take the corrosion out so here is the board cleaned out and you can see I stripped away the corrosion from this area. Here we have some exposed pads that I need to connect to the traces back again. And on the other side, here we have more cleaned up corrosion and in this area. And all that remains now to do is to reconstruct them uh, with a silver compound. So the idea behind applying our silver conducting compound is to use a napkin. I've showed this previously in other videos, but I'll do a brief description here. Uh, I've tried other methods, but this one seems to yield the best results. Basically what I'm trying to do is to get a fine, a thin sheet of, well, toilet paper, or you can use any other napkin. Oh, there we go. Okay, and uh, you will just roll the head of this in between your fingers. If you have two dry fingers, you might not be able to do it, but uh, if your fingers just do a little blow in them, and then just roll it, and then break away. And essentially, this is our paintbrush. So we will dip it in silver conducting compound and just paint over the uh, damaged area or the area that we want to make conductive regardless if it's, it is already on an exposed pad or directly on the board. It will stick there forever once it's dried out. So when applying the silver compound over the area that you want to work on, uh, first dip uh, cotton bud in alcohol and just go over the area and leave it a second to dry then take your applicator which by the way looks that big under the microscope 
dip it in the silver compound and essentially you just start painting the missing areas. So this is the final result. You can see the three areas where I made corrections and that is this one and we have two more here that are interconnected and on the back side we have this area small one another small one here and uh, these two small ones collect the minus the negative and this one collects the positive so that should be the circuitry done and now it's assembly and see if we have a success or not Perfect. Perfect. And now let's pop in the battery and see see if we have anything running. So fingers crossed. Yeah. Yes. And apparently that was the issue. An auto common fault and that's what you want to see with corrosion. You want it only in the area where the power is picked up from the batteries in the different pads and uh, circuitry around this area. So yeah, we got a working watch and now I am going to strip the module completely and then do a small reconditioning of the case, nothing too extraordinary here. But yeah, a success. The case and bracelet are in pretty good condition, but they are very grimy. Just take a look at that. That's years of wearing. And uh, one bonus is that this uh, scale like bracelet is actually original to this model. So it's an all original model. We'll take it off and put it through the ultrasonic cleaner. And as for the crystal, it does have some scratches, nothing too awful. Uh, the gloss isn't that thick, but I will be able to take a small layer off and then polish it with cerium oxide slurry.
So many hours later, we end up with this and you can't help by questioning yourself, was it worth it? And from my perspective, yes. What I've done is actually brought another watch to life that maybe would have been scrapped for parts. And when I get to work on the watch and bring it back from the dead, uh, it makes it more mine. Because you get more personal with the watch when you open it up, fix it, and then put it back together and try to give it a little bit more polish to look it nice and new. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next Vintage Digital Watches.